Bear and Bull. The phrase that haunts all players of Fallout New Vegas. And by the way, House calls them Bear and Bull first. Heck off with your Ulysses slander. House did it first. Anyways, what was I on about? Oh yeah, Baron Bull. Perhaps the most lasting and memorable aspect of New Vegas is its factions, which provide no good option for the Mojave. As such, the discussion around the best option for the Mojave persists to this very day. That was weirdly phrased. And I'm not going to rewrite it. I am here to put an end to the debate once and for all. Nah, not really. I'm just here to provide a video hating on the man I despise most in the Mojave, uh, this skibbity fecker. Yippee! There'll be no wedding bells for today. House is often considered to be a libertarian. This is very wrong. For one, he taxes Prim if he gets control of it, uh, quite heavily in fact. As repayment for their NCR loyalty, Mr. House sends Securitrons to Prim to protect it and collect heavy taxes from its citizens. Second, he doesn't really care about the free market at all. I suspect if you were to ask him, he would take Rockefeller's position and argue that the free market is actually a hindrance to business. Which, to be fair, it kind of is. It's much easier to make a profit when you can artificially control prices and they're not subject to a volatile, you know, marketplace. But if not a libertarian, then what is he? Well, there's that long comprehensive video comparing him to Singapore, which is quite good, but I'm gonna take a bit of a different approach here and just call him an autocratic imperialist. House himself explicitly rejects the title of dictator. I have no interest in abusing others, but autocracy? Firm control in the hands of a technological and economic visionary? Yes, that Vegas shall have. And I don't think that's wrong per se. I do not particularly get the feeling that House is, like, ideologically opposed to taking advice or having help ruling the Mojave. But rather, he's just so egotistical that he doesn't think there's anyone worthy of advising him. So, while I wouldn't say that he's ideologically a totalitarian, I don't think he's taking suggestions anytime soon. The only other real ideology that governs House's life is that contracts are sacred. House loves contracts and treaties. Mu much mu mutual, yeah, mutual agreement. Mutual agreements between two parties, which each are beholden to, all backed up by the force of arms and a little else. You see, House likes to think of himself as some complex master manipulator and savior of humanity. A messiah who through force of will and complex political maneuvering will lead America away from the old world. In other words, a narcissist who considers himself the peak of human evolution. Reminder that House programmed a robot to blindly praise him and have sex with him. I'm not making that up. House is a freak. Mr. House has a lot of needs, sugar. I take care of all of them, and a lady doesn't kiss and tell. All in all, House's ideology boils down to a might-makes-right mentality. He deserves New Vegas because... Well, he took it. In fact, the Strip had already been somewhat developed by the families before he ever woke up. And according to the residents of Vault 21, he actually made life significantly worse for a good portion of the Strip's residents. In truth, the New Vegas we see in the game is really made by the families and residents of Vault 21. House is a glorified bodyguard. Not to say he's done nothing for the Strip, the security is top-notch and his dealings with NCR have been quite beneficial to the Strip. Yet, little of this has actually to do with House, fundamentally. The Omertas evidently went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Khans, um, something that even NCR has issues doing. Unless, of course, they're women and children, because um, even in fiction, America loves war crimes. So, evidently, I think that the Omertas could do pretty well for security. 
uh, just as much if not more than the Securitrons can do, at least at the start of the game. If you want a solid negotiator, the Chairman and Benny seem like much better options. And when it comes to the White Gloves, they've been shown to have ties with NCR elites, something that House doesn't even have. So with outside dealings, both the Tops and White Gloves society seem much better adept at dealing with the outside world than House is. All in all, a good amount of the success that we see on the Strip it could be achieved by the families on their own. Sure, House kickstarted it, uh, but realistically, a lot of the success comes from the individual houses. Families. They're not houses, they're families. This isn't like a medieval simulator. House's ideology views his position as some sort of divine gift to him because, well, he saved New Vegas from the bombs and. Now he has control of it. And I really despise this ideology. And it's built upon false assumptions. House thinks he saved New Vegas from the Atomic War, a war which he sees as the result of democracy and politicians of the old world. If you want to see the fate of democracies, look out the windows. This has always been wrong. The war in Fallout has always been somewhat vague, not broadly speaking, but in the specifics that would allow us to place blame or get some insight or pass judgment on those who perpetrated the war. It might have been caused by the United States doing something goofy in China, which I think would align really well with a lot of the parodying of American nationalism we see early on in the series. Or it might have been China themselves just launching the nukes for no real reason, emulating more the war bad we see in Fallout 3 or even 4. Or it could have been corporates greedy for ever more profits as the later games and show heavily implied. We don't know, and despite the show's heavy implications, we still don't technically know who dropped the bombs first, and there's enough room that this remains a mystery. But what is clear is that House profited off this war, or at least the fear of it. His company built robots designed to harm. He built Liberty Prime. He may rant on about how he saved New Vegas from the pre-war fools who launched the old world towards its destruction. But he also helped cause that destruction. This scene in the show where House is invited to essentially plan the bombing of the United States by vault Tech got some pushback from people who thought this was out of character for Mr. House. Oh, voice break. It's not. At all. House does not care about humanity. He pretends to, but truthfully, he doesn't. He's an empty void of greed and lust for power. He doesn't join vault schemes or the Enclave, not because he has a disagreement with, like, their ethics or their morals, but because teaming up with other people would be beneath him. He says that he couldn't save the world from nuclear apocalypse, but he also never once tries to. I knew I couldn't save the world, nor did I care to. Because the death of billions mean nothing to him. They did not achieve what House had achieved, and thus they were lesser. Their lives simply meant less, not worthy of even attempting to save when he could save his own and what he built. House is a bold-faced imperialist, formed from a cutthroat and Darwinist business world. He doesn't care for the lives of those in Los or New Vegas. He is clear that he does not consider them to be on his level. They're children in need of guiding and curbing their excesses. He is happy to profit off their suffering because he does not consider them to be worthy of anything other than supporting him and his ego. He sees the world as void of any collectiveness. It's simply individuals who must make the most of themselves. And the only way to do so is to hoard wealth and power. Without either, an individual is pointless, useless, and a waste of resources. Unless, of course, they are themselves a resource for you to draw upon. And he believes all of this because he thinks he cannot lose. The house always wins, after all. But the truth is, the game was rigged from the start. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. Jingle, jangle. The second reason I really despise House is because he's just an idiot. Take the strip, for example. The shining light of New Vegas and House's personal project. Four out of five of the strip factions are actively plotting against him. And the fifth just straight up hates him. 
House knows that the Legion has spies on the Strip, and the head of the Legion's KGB can waltz up to the player on the Strip with absolutely no repercussions. In fact, the Legion has made contact with and is actively aiding a family in revolting against House's rule. And House only knows that something's wrong. They're up to something. Brilliant, House! I totally want to give you political control of the Mojave now! He is fully incapable of stopping Benny from trying to achieve his plans. In fact, if the Courier didn't have plot armor, uh, House would get RKO'd by two of his own employee families because they had to not be able to enforce the laws on the Strip. And that's true, he can't really enter casinos and NCR citizens are subject only to the casino rules and NCR authorities. So, to be clear, in his own capital, his stomping grounds, the land he saved from nuclear fallout, he controls the streets. Like literally just the ground. This is the political genius of House. Presume you're too smart to be outwitted, so just don't put any safeguards against people trying to oppose you. Brilliant! House is not some political genius. He's smart, don't get me wrong, but he's convinced he cannot be outsmarted, and even if that were to happen, he relies far too heavily on the threat of the Securitrons, which he also plays far too much trust in. He bets on his force of arms being able to intimidate those he needs to be loyal, and he loses the bet significantly twice. Um, of course, until the courier comes in and shoots up the poker table. He recognizes that an embargo by NCR would be disastrous and ruinous for the Strip, but he also bets on the fact that if he forces NCR forces to evacuate Hoover Dam, they're going to blame that on Kimball and move on in life? What? My brother died at the Battle of Hoover, damn you! House's literal plan is to antagonize the government of essentially his sole consumer, and then kick them out of their prized possession after winning an immensely costly war. House is right that they will turn on Kimball, but they're also going to turn on House. House is going to be the one who made their sacrifices all for naught and now stands in their way of eastward expansion. House considers NCR citizens to be a horde of consumers, and he's not wrong. But the thing is, these are not the consumers of a pre-war America, dominated by corporations, propaganda, worshipping luxury, and scared brainless by the prospect of war. No, NCR is an emulation of a much older United States, the one that fought wars with any power which tried to check their expansionism. The citizens of NCR are not simply going to accept House's victory. They're not animals bowing down to a superior power. They're going to fight House. And when both NCR government and citizens are aligned against House, he's not going to win and I don't know why he thinks he can. Actually, I do know why. He thinks of himself as so superior that the citizens of NCR will recognize him as the most powerful man in the world and thus submit to him. That might have been how a pre-war American citizenry would act, but I don't see NCR citizens rolling over in submission. In fact, I'm somewhat convinced that this is why NCR in the Fallout show was curb stomped right after New Vegas. I think a house ending is the canon one, and frankly, I think that's the best option for telling a story. However, I suspect the writers realized that House's regime in New Vegas was on a very short fuse if faced with an unchecked NCR. Hence why they had to be nerfed. That's just speculation, but if I was a writer for Fallout, this would be one of the few ways I could imagine actually preserving a house ending. House also has a major public relations issue. No one likes him. Literally, there's no popular support for him at all. Free Sight hates his guts. NCR despises him. Legion sees him as a degenerate. He taxes Prim heavily if inherited. He does nothing about Powder Ganger should he take over as the major power in the Mojave. And the only thing he ever does that might earn him 
a whim of goodwill is to eliminate the fiends. The guy's so evil, even the legion just murders them. No one wants House to rule over them. And why would they? The Strip families make the Strip. House is helpful, not necessary. To anyone who is aligned with NCR, House is nothing but an obstacle. To the Legion, a degenerate. To the Independents, a tyrant. He does nothing for the Mojave and everything for himself. And unlike others, what profits House does not profit the Mojave. Those who do his bidding are compensated, sure, but judging by the reactions of the Emeritas, Benny, White Gloves, and residents of Vault 21, that compensation is nowhere near enough to curb their desires. Because House wants all the power and wealth to flow through him. He does not cooperate, but subordinates. Rather than lifting the factions of the Mojave up, in a cooperative system that makes them achieve wealth they never could have on their own, House clearly gives them what they had? But clearly, at least to those under him, he prevents them from achieving their full potential. And I don't think I can disagree. House is a prideful man who would not allow anyone to attain what he has, because to him, no one else deserves it. He might be able to put men in space within 50 years, but I'm willing to bet he won't be able to count any among them as loyal in 10. Oh, ain't you glad you're single? Jingle, jangle. In preparation for this video, I decided to read Titan by Ron Cherno to learn a bit more about that first robber baron, John D. Rockefeller. My mask is falling down. Of course, House is primarily based upon Howard Hughes. But I think it would be a bit short-sighted to view him as based on a sole personality. As such, I think it's best to think about Mr. House as an amalgamation of all those great American titans of industry who we despise for destroying our beloved free markets and hail as their greatest successes. Anyways, House's ideology is something which is very old world. I mean, of course he's of the old world, uh, but it but I mean, it really only makes sense in context of the old world. For Rockefeller, for example, love of cooperative monopolies may have seemed great in the face of volatile markets, but it looks a lot less beneficial whenever the small businessman is starving while congressmen dine on Standard Oil's dime. It is easy to accept a stable monopoly whenever there's a real threat of you going out of business at any moment. When your job is on the line, these monopolies and these powerful men and this stability seems quite nice. Oh, my cat just opened the door to my office, that scared me so bad. It's a lot harder to reconcile oneself to total control by the capitalist when your face is bashed in by the National Guard or a private policing agency. Likewise, it's easy to see House's paternalism and imperial bent as strong in the face of a chaotic and unstable pre-war democratic rule which killed itself. When the world might end at any moment, the safety House might provide could be quite alluring. Yet, in the wake of the nuclear fallout, ah, he just kind of seems like a failure. If someone wants security, well, there's a bunch of freaks playing Colosseum, and they prove far more capable at maintaining stability and security within their ranks. Not to mention that those freaks will body New Vegas if they win at Hoover Dam. If you want someone who's political savvy, I would suggest anyone other than Linnaeus. Uh, again, House has no allies and pretty much no one whose best interest is actually keeping him in power. Whoa, whoa. No, no, no. You get back here. If you want freedom, well then you by no means want House in charge. His securitrons preach that self-control is a virtue, uh, but House doesn't really believe that. Well, he does, but the problem is if everyone had self-control, well, there goes his economy. He profits from the very demographic he sees as degenerate. He doesn't want to govern your individual life, sure, but he also cannot abide those who would want to make a name for themselves, nor those brave enough to make a stand against him. 
In the face of the freedoms that the NCR represents, genuine values of the old world no matter how problematic, the utter liberty of a yes man ending, and the far more competent, if far more morally abhorrent, Legion, I cannot help but feel that Mr. House represents the worst of the old world and embodies none of the lessons of the new. NCR is an emulation of the old world, but it does much to retain the old American will, spirit, and values which pre-war America had become completely alien to. The Legion is one of the few factions that fully embraces the new world and embraces violence and goofiness as the only true means of power without ever dressing it up as House does. And the independent route, in my opinion, with a lot of other factors I am not mentioning in this video, is probably a long-term better solution than House, as it has all the benefits of what House could accomplish without the public relations issue or any of the ideas and assumptions of the old world holding it back. All in all, I do not like Mr. House. I do not understand why some of you people love him so much. Don't get me wrong, I love him as a character, and he should be the canonical ending of New Vegas, but he also sucks and is a pee-pee-poo-poo -poo head. Now, if you'll join me, let's all go harass Military Snake into uploading his TF2 video. And along the way, let's touch some glass. <laughs> All right, that's the take I'm doing. Yeah, sure, why not?